Hit the subscribe button or visit us at auau.auanet.org. So this is a, a patient uh, with a history of biochemical recurrence following a radiation therapy. Uh, three years later, he developed uh, a rising PSA. He was placed on androgen deprivation therapy uh, and, while on continuous androgen deprivation therapy. And this PSA has recently uh, gone uh, from eight to 21 over eight months. So this is a rapidly rising PSA. His testosterone is a 19. It's important to check that in this situation. And we find in this patient on imaging that he has new uh, pelvic uh, bony metastases noted with enlarged pelvic and retroperitoneal lymph nodes. So the question becomes, uh, what are the options for this patient? Now, this striking finding uh, that over 70% of metastases in castration-resistant prostate cancer have robust androgen receptor expression was really a remarkable uh, observation and led to the discovery of many of these uh, agents that we're going to be talking about. And it's important to realize that there are ligand dependent mechanisms, which we'll be talking about here, but there are also ligand independent mechanisms uh, that uh, consist of coactivators and alternate pathways. So obviously having more androgen receptor will increase its sensitivity to uh, levels of existing ligand. So in, a in addition to amplification, uh, which we saw in the last slide, um, it can also become more promiscuous uh, by binding adrenal androgens. And this is again, a pathway that's targeted uh, by abiraterone. As shown on the left, there are also various point mutations uh, that play a role in the androgen receptor. Again, it can become more promiscuous being able to bind uh, glucocorticoids uh, and other um, uh, factors that uh, play a role in singling in this situation. And then finally, uh, there are androgen receptor variants that we'll uh, talk briefly about as well. So realize that uh, the majority of these agents that we have now uh, will alter uh, androgen receptor binding. Now, abiraterone is an irreversible inhibitor of the hydrolase and lyase activities of uh, CYP17 and uh, uh, CYP1720 lyase. Uh, this catalyzes the conversion, as you see here on the left, of cholesterol to DHEA. Uh, it's much more potent than ketoconazole, uh, which has weak uh, inhibitory activities of uh, CYP17. And realize that by blocking uh, these pathways at these points, there are a number of potential side effects that these patients experience. Uh, there's increased mineral corticoid activity. And what one can see is that uh, there's salt retention, which leads to hypertension, uh, flu uh, fluid edema, uh, and as well as low potassium, uh, which are some of the side effects that need to be considered when using these drugs. One of the first uh, studies to really look at abiraterone and show prolonged survival was in the castration, metastatic castration resistant state. Uh, this study uh, was again, uh, after post chemotherapy, after um, um, treatment with docetaxel. And what you can see here is in this state, uh, there was about a three month improvement in survival in patients. Uh, this led to its FDA approval in this metastatic CRPC setting. Abiraterone was subsequently uh, shown to improve survival pre-chemotherapy. And uh, in this situation, uh, this is prior to docetaxel chemotherapy. And in this study, the Cougar uh, AA302 study, uh, there were about a thousand patients who were randomized uh, to either getting abiraterone or placebo. And this is just showing the improvement in radiographic free survival. There was also an improvement uh, in overall survival, it reduced the risk of death by about 19%. It also lengthened the time uh, to the need for uh, opioids, and that's shown in this slide here. It's important to realize uh, there are some uh, potential uh, side effects associated with the use of these drugs. 
transaminitis is higher uh, in, uh, with the use of abiraterone. And so it's important to look at, uh, to follow uh, these uh, liver enzymes uh, within the first uh, three months uh, after uh, initiating treatment and periodically thereafter. Uh, one can also see fatigue or fluid retention uh, and hypokalemia uh, play a role uh, with regard to these, uh, the use of these drugs. How do we uh, minimize the side effects of abiraterone? Uh, we work with our uh, primary uh, pres uh, prescribing patients, uh, uh, physicians, uh, they can help some with the uh, fluid retention. But uh, once you, ways you can do this is uh, take the drug on an empty stomach. It's given with prednisone, uh, five milligrams BID. Uh, sometimes it could be used uh, once a day, the prednisone. As I mentioned, uh, the liver function tests are important to check as well as checking for hypokalemia within the first few weeks after starting. And then routine assessments with hyper, uh, for hypertension and fluid retention. Again, uh, the primary care physicians can help in the management of these patients. And remember, there are some drug interactions. Coumadin uh, increases uh, the, uh, uh, it has increased levels uh, with use of abiraterone as well as other drugs that utilize uh, uh, CYP metabolism. As uh, we briefly mentioned uh, before, there is this susceptible niche uh, in hormone-sensitive prostate cancer. You can see in the blue box here uh, that these drugs are now being utilized uh, uh, in. So it's being combined with androgen deprivation therapy for metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer. And the trial that really uh, first kicked off this uh, indication uh, was this LATITUDE trial in which 1,200 patients uh, with hormone naive uh, uh, prostate cancer, metastatic prostate cancer, were randomized to either abiraterone plus lupron, lupron or lupron alone. Uh, they noted that it delayed cancer progression by 18 months and reduced the risk of death by 38%. So really fairly striking uh, improvements uh, in outcomes, suggesting that moving this earlier in the cancer space, uh, you may have even uh, improved outcomes. Uh, these patients are obviously on abiraterone for a long term. Uh, there are some potentially some long term bone issues associated with its use, uh, as well as the other uh, previously mentioned problems. But this is really a very striking study uh, that has changed the face of prostate cancer treatment. So, uh, which patients would we want to use abiraterone for? Uh, it's FDA approved for men with metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer before and after chemotherapy and also for metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer uh, with androgen deprivation therapy. It's important, and we had talked a little bit about this in the last case, that uh, it also can be used in M0 castration-resistant prostate cancer. It's not been FDA approved in that space, but given its uh, behavior uh, and uh, some uh, non-FDA, in some other trials, non-randomized trials, it, it potentially can be used in that space as well. We talked about side effects, including hypotension, uh, I'm hypertension, hypokalemia, edema, uh, and also steroid-induced hyperglycemia. So when we think about patients, and many of our patients are elderly, that potentially would be candidates for this treatment, uh, we want to be careful about the diabetics, uh, we want, uh, those individuals with gastric ulcers, uh, infections, rapidly progressive disease, individuals who have a significant of, amount of cardiac disease, uh, including heart failure and edema, and also hepatic dysfunction uh, or liver dysfunction, including alcohol abuse, uh, would be individuals we'd want to be careful about using this drug uh, for. This is just looking uh, at a table uh, summarizing uh, randomized trials that have done uh, for uh, many of these uh, oral drugs. Um, one can see that uh, there are in metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer, uh, abiraterone, enzalutamide, apalutamide, and for castration resistant prostate cancer, enzalutamide, apalutamide, and darolutamide. Again, um, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, these androgen. Um, receptor uh, antagonists. So really the first, uh, these androgen um, uh, enzalutamide was really the first one that was developed. And uh, again, it was, an, uh, it was a rashly designed androgen receptor inhibitor. Uh, it's often termed a second generation inhibitor. 
Uh, and it, again, it has about five to eight fold higher affinity for the uh, uh, androgen receptor versus uh, bicalutamide. So it's rare in this modern era that bicalutamide is being used for advanced disease. Enzalutamide uh, also uh, inhibits uh, translocation of the androgen receptor, uh, it prevents DNA binding, uh, and also coactivator recruitment. And because it uh, affects multiple steps, again, it's often termed an uh, androgen receptor signaling inhibitor. It's important to realize that apalutamide and uh, darolutamide are very similar uh, mechanisms of action. Um, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, they may be uh, more useful because uh, they, there's less penetration of the blood brain barrier. So there may be uh, less fatigue and issues with regard to uh, seizures in these patients uh, with apalutamide and darolutamide. So enzalutamide uh, in the post chemo setting, uh, the AFFIRM trial demonstrated a, a benefit uh, in uh, survival of 37% uh, reduction in the risk of death. Uh, again, it was in the pre-chemotherapy setting uh, was also uh, a, a positive study. Uh, and this is just looking at the radiographic progression-free survival, but overall survival, there also was an improvement. Some of the common side effects associated with enzalutamide, uh, there's fatigue, uh, hot flushes. Uh, these patients are more susceptible to falls. So it's important to realize that <clears throat> in these patients, uh, you want to be careful in the elderly. Uh, they have an increased risk of hip fractures uh, because of these falls. Uh, also, uh, if these patients have uh, seizures uh, or a seizure history, you probably want to lean more toward abiraterone use rather than enzalutamide. Uh, and in patients with uncontrolled hypertension, also, it's something to be very uh, careful about. So there are several things to think about uh, when it comes to minimizing and managing side effects associated with enzalutamide. Uh, you can dose reduce enzalutamide to half. Uh, you can consider a dose reduction, especially if there's profound fatigue. You need to take care of this uh, if they're being used concurrently in patients on seizure drugs. And uh, typically dose holds can help in, uh, uh, by holding it uh, uh, one or two weeks uh, with regard to uh, minimizing some of these side effects. So uh, advanced age is again, uh, one area to be concerned about uh, with the use of enzalutamide. So which patients would we consider these androgen signaling inhibitors? It's FDA approved. Uh, for men with metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer before and after chemotherapy. It's also uh, improved now for M0, CRPC, as well as metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer. I mentioned the profound fatigue, hypertension, uh, seizure issues uh, associated with this drug. Uh, so we don't, and when we're thinking about patients who may not be optimal candidates for this drug, uh, those with a history of seizure, strokes, falls, Patients who already have significant fatigue uh, and advanced age uh, is another group. I mentioned uh, apalutamide. It has a similar mechanism of action. It's FDA approved. Uh, you also need to be careful about hypothyroidism uh, in, uh, with this drug. And there was a grade two uh, hypothyroidism in, in the Titan uh, and Spartan trials. Uh, Deramis, uh, der I'm sorry, darolutamide uh, has a similar mechanism of action. Uh, there may be less penetration of the blood-brain barrier, uh, maybe less associated uh, fatigue and seizures with this, uh, but these have not been directly compared uh, against each other. Now, a uh, question arose earlier in the chat, you know, which of these androgen receptor uh, inhibitors uh, should go first in advanced disease? And there's really limited get data to guide us choosing between age agents. Um, Sequencing uh, abiraterone before enzalutamide uh, uh, improved P PSA progression versus enzalutamide first versus abiraterone second. Enzalutamide tends to have a better response uh, uh, in patients who have failed abiraterone than vice versa. Uh, it is important to think about uh, if you have if you're using an, an uh, androgen singling agent, 
Uh, why should you follow it with a similar mechanism? At that point, should, one should maybe consider uh, uh, chemotherapy, docetaxel, for, a situa- for example. And there may be situations uh, with uh, castration-resistant prostate cancer uh, that require other drugs. So if there's very rapid disease progression, uh, significant symptoms or visceral disease, uh, docetaxel may be better utilized. Uh, there can be uh, docetaxel carboplatinum uh, for aggressive variants, for example, with a lot of visceral metastases. And for patients with a neuroendocrine or small cell variants, uh, one would think about uh, small cell drug uh, combinations that are typically used for lung cancer, uh, but they would be used in this uh, situation as, as well. So in summary, uh, second generation oral uh, androgen receptor uh, inhibitors, uh, again, abiraterone, enzalutamide, and apalutamide for metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer, uh, for CRPC, enzalutamide, apalutamide, and darolutamide, and then for metastatic disease, uh, abiraterone and enzalutamide. Urologists are actually uh, are obviously more likely to be involved in their application uh, with metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer and M0 uh, CRPC as well. And, and many uh, uh, larger clinics are uh, using this at the present time. So uh, take home points, uh, androgen receptor inhibitors um, uh, are, consist of enzalutamide, apalutamide, and darolutamide. Uh, we talked about the indications in both metastatic hormone sensitive and castration resistant disease. They're contraindicated uh, in men in general with a seizure history, although darolutamide may have less blood brain barrier penetration. Uh, some of the side effects with enzalutamide include fatigue, seizure risk, hypertension. Uh, there may be constipation and diarrhea. Uh, we talked about the hypothyroidism and rash with apalutamide and uh, some of the potential benefits of darolutamide. Again, we wanna be careful with the use of these drugs in patients who can't tolerate uh, the systemic steroids. Uh, so diabetics, uh, gastric ulcer disease, uh, and others. With abiraterone, androgen sy- uh, synthesis inhibitor, uh, these are some of the indications. Uh, you give this with prednisone, five milligrams BID, Hypertension side effects are associated with the use of prednisone often include uh, uh, hypokalemia, hypertension, uh, fatigue, and steroid-induced hyperglycemia. It's preferred in patients with a seizure history uh, and also severe baseline fatigue or on Coumadin. So uh, we'll stop there and move on then to our next uh, speak, uh, next talk. Uh, and I'll uh, introduce Dr. Gamella, who will be discussing uh, the genetics of advanced prostate cancer. Thanks.